uh, I first learned about Carlton Pearson from listening to This American Life. I heard the episode of the show that covered his story and, and what he preached and what happened to him as a result and have always remembered it. It's an incredibly memorable episode. I think one of the most popular episodes of the show. And what struck me first was intellectual, was here's a guy who's questioning the existence of hell. Like, what does that mean? This thing that we do, do I believe in hell? And you know, I was actually raised Jewish. <clears throat> we don't believe in hell. And why do people believe in hell? And the fact that there are a lot of people who believe in a literal hell. And what would it mean for someone like, as Bishop Carlton Pearson did, to go up in front of his congregation and preach that hell doesn't exist? But beyond that, intellectually, what drew me to the story was then going online and looking at footage of him preach, because he is a phenomenal preacher. I mean, I'm not someone who otherwise watches evangelists or televangelists, and he is the exception. He, the charisma goes through the screen, and I think one of the things that makes him different is aside from his incredible knowledge of the Bible and his passion for what he's preaching about is that he is funny, he's self-deprecating. I watched an entire sermon of him telling a story about wetting the bed when he was a child, you know, to thousands of people. And, and he's getting across an incredibly moving message. And it's like watching the best comedian and theologian all at the same time. Well, I play Gina Pearson, who's the wife of Bishop Carlton Pearson. And this story, as it relates to Gina, really, I was really moved by it because it tells the story of a really intelligent woman who, you know, knew what she was getting into by marrying this bishop, and in fact really welcomed that, but didn't maybe quite understand that it was going to mean that she was going to have to share her husband with the entire world, the, the, their entire world, essentially. And so watching this woman, or, or learning about how this woman had to navigate through that, and also remain a prominent character in his life, um, was very moving to me. A, a character named Henry who's sort of an amalgam of a few real life um, people who co-founded the church with Carlton and um, felt very conflicted when Carlton had his change of ideology and ultimately is not able to go along with him and there's a big divide in the church. This is, this is the first time I've ever directed a movie about a real life person, a real life person who's still alive and the most moving thing in the initial stages of the process was meeting him. But then once we, once I cast the film and I started working with the actors, I suddenly had all these real people that they could actually go and sit with or meet. And so Condola got to spend time with Gina Pearson. And Jason, I put him on the phone with a couple of the people who were the basis of the character, who I have to give props to because they are on the other side of the story. And it took an enormous leap of faith for them to believe that their side of, of all of the events was gonna to be told you know, fairly. And I think the way Jason engaged also helped put them at ease, but it was, it was a great experience for me as a director and also I think for the actors and great to watch them really sink into their characters as they related to the real people. Carlton, was so generous in the making of this movie. It is phenomenal. And to be clear, this is not, he had no approval or oversight of the script or the story. He was just having faith and trust in me and in the screenwriter and all of the producers and the actors to tell the best version of his story possible. And that meant that he gave literally hundreds of hours to first and foremost the screenwriter and then to me and then to the actors. He came before we started shooting. We shot in Atlanta, representing Atlanta as Tulsa. And he came and he preached one Sunday so that all of the actors could see him in action actually preaching the way he used to do it. Um, not his old message, but just his style and his presence on, on the pulpit.